Good morning, Falcons fans. Coming straight from the dungeon. This is, uh, I, I go by Gucci. My name's Mike Salmon. But uh, for the douchebag that said, hey, your microphone didn't work, you turn off. Is this better? Um, you know, don't watch the fucking thing. So, you know what GFY means? Please go fuck yourself. So, the reason why I'd like to do these videos, and to all that watch, it's fantastic. Thank you for inputs. Good stuff. Um, hey, Angela, back to you, buddy. It is pudding. Um, I'm going to talk about a mock draft. I'm going to post the mock draft with this video, maybe, and see if it helps. But my earlier video is strategic direction. What is a strategic direction? And I'll go back to why I said that. Because right now, post the Watson um, thing, debacle, and we know it's a debacle. Because we know for a fact, we know for a fact it was released that the Colts had a second and third round on the table. And then... Suddenly, it's the third round. So, let me get some out of the way. I get the move on from that round. I get the cultural change. But why not just trade the man when you had a fucking chance and get max value? And the same thing's happened to Grady. We have not extended Grady Jarrett. We haven't moved on from him, right? Trade the man if he's not in your plans and get max value. Because as you all know, the longer you go, the worse it gets. So, Again, I'm going to point out, I think McKay, and there's a lot of communication issues yet again in the fucking Falcons um, organization. And remember, this is, a, this is a team, don't forget that long ago, that we had the owner come out and said it's going to be Rich McKay, Scott Pioli, and Dan Quinn, and TD working together with these roles. What the fuck is going on? Okay, TF, I hope we wish well for you, and I'm not going to ramble too much on it but i'm not very impressed so far i i, I see yet another yes man but again i did say this by tia she's second year um hey i didn't see some of your offensive magic but you know what we're gonna go so i'm gonna tell you with this mock draft so i'm doing a couple assumptions in this mock and i'll post the mock drafts as well so uh first of all we extend grady because you know what if we trade grady it's a rebuild so i'm a guesser extend him um, second, I think you gotta get quarterback. How do you not get a quarterback at this point? I mean, come on, Mariota as your future, and even a bridge. Let's just get this thing. Somebody, some smart ass, oh, we don't get a bridge. I get a fucking bridge, but are you really putting your fucking faith in Jay Mariota? One of the biggest busts ever. Mariota was not that good at Oregon, he's been terrible in the pros overall. And Ryan Tannehill beat him out with a, another washout guy. Beat him out on a $2 million salary. Three straight years on injured reserve. Come on, dude. Get it right. Whoever said that, GFY, baby. GFY. Um, I do also think we want to get physical. I don't think that part changes, by the way. I think Smith and um, Pease are one physical players regardless. I think Debo's going to be released. That's the other assumption. Um, I, I don't know who he'll trade for. Maybe the Cowboys. Maybe Quinn wants them. But Debo post-June, I believe, is a lot better safe. So in this box scenario, Falcons look around, pardon me. The Falcons look around and, you know, they're eight. And uh, I think in, I'm thinking Malik Willis goes a lot earlier. Sorry, guys. So this chase scenario, the Pittsburgh Steelers go up. It says the number 20, 20th overall, the 52 overall, number 138, and a second round of next year from number eight overall pick. They select Kenny Pickett. And this is after Malik Willis. And, I'm thinking Malik could go anywhere from Detroit at two, but I definitely don't see the Panthers passing. So he's off. Steelers bring him home top kid. So we drop down number 20. I was uh, selecting Desmond Ritter. Why would I do it? Well, Ritter's a six foot four, 220, pretty prototypical QB size wise. Has a good arm. I wouldn't call it a great arm, but he's got a good arm. He, he's definitely a winner. He's been a big part of that Cincinnati resurgence. I like that. Um, He's played on teams with defense and run. He's an unselfish player. He's got good wheels. And I, honestly, I'm not mad if we get Desmond Ritter. I'd be okay. Don't even knock on him. I think my boy Jason said it best. It looks like he's 43 years old. But joking aside, I think Ritter would be fine. Um, somebody comped him as Ryan Tannehill. That that could be that. Uh, I tell you, I'm going to go out on a limb here, though. Um, Ritter in the right situation could really surprise me. Excellent pick. Okay. Over to Matt Ryan. I would have killed Matt Ryan, built the defense, but I'm not GM. Second best. Let's get him. And then number 43. 
Uh, this is going to be a little awkward, guys, the second round pick. I picked N'Kobe Dean. I think teams are going to pass a lot of them on N'Kobe. Uh, he is 5'11", 230. Um, you know, and that's going to be something to turn guys off. And, um, you know, I'll be honest with you on N'Kobe. I don't care if you run a 5.340. I don't care if he's 5'5". Five five. The guy's a football player. Uh, to me, he's perfect. He, he's a... Uh, Attacks hard, leadership. We fill the middle. Second for second round pick. I picked Cameron Thomas Edge. Uh, I don't know if you guys know about him, but San Diego State Cameron Thomas. I really like his player. Um, I don't know that he's a 12 sack guy or something like that, but he's just a tough guy. Watch him play. Uh, there is some weird stuff with just literally three down linemen often. And uh, he's strong, he's tenacious. To me, he looks like he could gain 15, 20 more pounds and actually be one of those athletic you know, defensive ends that can play five-tech inside and even jumbo. Kind of like, um, everybody remember Justin Smith over at uh, 49ers? I mean, yeah, Justin then bust out 12 sacks and he caused havoc. havoc. Uh, second, second round pick, number 58. I think it's one acquired for the Steelers. I picked Calvin Austin. Why Calvin? Um... Man, I like that explosive kid. He's tough. He's small, but he's he's not skinny. Uh, man, he gets off the top too. Good vertical threat. Uh, I believe he ran like a what? What a sub four three? I believe the forty. I mean, he plays like a sub four three. I think that type of explosiveness would would benefit Pitts immensely. Just so you know. Uh, then I went number seventy four. I picked Travis Jones. Um, he's a UConn player. 6'4", 330. Watch him closely. Um, I think he's better than Jordan Davis. There's not an ounce of fat on this guy. 6'4", 330. He moves very well. Not a lot of sacks, but a lot of pressures. And if you really watch him, um, he's you see a guy that Pease could work with. At the worst, I could see this guy being kind of like take, oh, was it Daquan, Daquan Smith, I believe it is. Is that right? That nose tackle that uh, Pease had at Houston. Athletic type nose, does he get pushed back? Assuming we keep Grady, Grady would be very happy to have this guy. And now with now the reason why I'm doing this, if you see if you keep Grady, you got Taquan Graham, you add a, a you know a, you know a, a Travis Jones now, you can really big, bring back maybe a rush or Purnell, and all of a sudden now D line's looking good. And I don't, you know, I guess I got cut yet. I'm not giving up on Kaminsky. But the idea, if you look at a lot of Pease's teams, and this is why it's critical, he likes that interior line of beefed up. And I think Travis Jones would be a great pick. Uh, the only other guy I really, really love interior line of that, which way before this was Devontae Wyatt. And this is a crazy one. I don't know if this will happen, but number 82, Isaiah Spiller, running back, Texas A&M a is available. Uh, six foot two twenty, typical one cut bruiser. Had a few carries, got some mileage, but I think after Brees Hall just ran like a four point three nine forty, I think Brees Hall just vaulted the top. I think Kenneth Walker is to the top. James Cook will probably draft a lot higher. Hey, if Isaiah falls, draft him. I think he's a perfect one cut fit for a zone type thing, and he's a hard runner, uh, much better than Mike Davis. 114, this is one of my favorite picks, and I don't know if he'll be available. I love Brandon Smith. He's an inside linebacker slash edge slash whatever at Penn State. Uh, kind of a Michael Parsons, like 6'3", 250. So his pro day ran a 4.52 and 37 inches vert. Very explosive athlete. He does play out of control quite a bit. But what I liked about him is he moved him all over the place. And this is a guy who can play stand-up outside linebacker. You can put him in a mic. You can go to Sam. Let, let's say uh, Nicobe, you got Nicobe, he's better off at will. It just gives you a lot of options. And at that point of pick, you are kind of picking off analytics. 138, the next pick. Uh, I picked uh, Charlie Kohler tight end, uh, Iowa State. Let me tell you something. This, this guy, watch him. He is one of the sneakiest athletic tight ends in this whole draft. I'm not kidding. So he's right 6'7", uh, 260. Excellent blocker. But watch him. He gets open. Um we don't have Matt anymore, but Matt would have loved him. But if you're going to have a young tight end, you're going to have a young quarterback, which we are going to have, or even Mariota, who's really not that accurate, not that great decision maker. You're going to need to beef up the tight end rotation. And and then we lost Lee Smith. I think it's six seven. He's got six seven two sixty now. I think he'd be a really excellent addition. And uh, down at I believe the pick. I'm sorry, I'm glasses one fifty one. Pardon me, guys. By the way, is the microphone quality better, asshole? All you had to do was say I couldn't hear you. So whatever your name was, 
Yeah, I'm cussing. Go fuck yourself. So, you know, make comments. Watch it. I don't give a shit, but a douche move. g Dog, my boy, I'm going to shout out to you. I'm looking for your mock draft while I wait for this last pick. And thank you for defending my honor, man. You're a good man. Uh, I went for Bo Melton in 151. Bo Melton's a 5'11", 190, uh, 4'3", speedster. Uh, I don't I don't know that Bo is going to be a great wide receiver in the NFL, but there's nothing wrong with having a speedy vert threat. You know, he may be a 30-catch game guy, but at that point, you want to fill your roster out as one. And, and two, that type of speed, you can't coach that. 166, I went with a very – that's my last pick. So this this scenario, account, we kind of traded up. We took our last two six rounders and moved them up. I picked David. If I misspelled it, I'm sorry, guys. David, I now high – Linebacker, Houston, six foot two, two fifty one. I've watched him over and over and over again. And okay, let me get out. I don't call him like a stud, but he just looks like a P's late round pick. He's got long vine arms, kind of tough. That that's a type of person you put to watch a roster. So I'm gonna recap this. So and I'm gonna set where we're at. So let's get some to recap. I think we have to draft a lot of people. I just don't know how we don't. Right, we're probably gonna have a shit ton of uh, undrafted free agents. Uh, we have dead cap out the ass right now. Um, salary cap still kind of jacked. I'm still pissed. I mean, but I, but I still got a problem why we don't go ahead and get a rusher, edge rusher. Right, I do. But it's looking more and more like bargain shopping. And yeah, I know next year we got 120 million cap or whatever you say it is. Yeah, but next year then. And, you know, you got an 80-year-old blank with prostate cancer. What's he going to do? Go out and buy something stupid. But, you know, the, I'm, my rambling are done on that one. This year, I think it is imperative we build the core. Personally, I would have killed Matt Ryan. I still don't understand why we're dealing with uh, six, what, six, what is it, over 60 million dead cap. Um, so if we keep it Grady, let's assume we're keeping Grady, right? Because we don't keep Grady. This changes the draft completely, by the way. I picked number one, Desmond Ritter. I'm predicting day one starter. They'll work in. Second pick, I pick Jacoby Dean. Again, they get starter. Mads Grove, Cameron Thomas, Edge. So that's, uh, that's my third pick. Again, probably a starter. Growing pains, but starter. Calvin Austin, uh, wide receiver, will get moved in and probably see a lot of plays. Travis Jones, UConn, will probably compete, but I can see him being uh, heavily rotated, but heavily used to get people off of Grady. Isaiah Spiller, we draft him. Number one running back day one. Boom. Brandon Smith, I'm not sure he's a starter day one. They may take him slower, but that ability, that speed, if nothing else, is a great special teams guy, a rotational thing. And by the way, let me go, let me just stop here with uh, let me finish up first. Sorry, I'll come back. Charlie Culler is my next pick. Again, maybe a rotational guy that becomes a favorite target. Bo Melton. Four to five year wide receivers. And the David, and uh, it may take him a while. He may have to work it in. But let me go back why I chose linebackers. Uh, why would I choose linebacker? So, one, we know Debo. Debo just went downhill, right? Uh, lost Foy, which I'm glad we didn't resign him, actually. We got Michael Walker. Can you imagine adding in a Kobe Dean and Brandon Smith to that? It's because, and then if you got Travis Jones and Cameron Thomas, remember I told you about Cameron Thomas, he's like a five tech type. Now you're getting big and stout up in the front seven. Because one thing the Falcons have done pretty good, in my opinion, other than the free safety, I'm still not happy there, is they have a pretty stout secondary. I like Darren Hall. He's a good pick. Um, Casey Hayward, is he two years off yet? He's still talented. And, of course, A.J. Terrell. If we could get that front seven up more, I think things should be a little better. All right, guys. I'm uh, done signing off. Hope you enjoyed the video.